Welcome to Living Magically. This is Michelle Orwick, your host. And this week we are going to cover the week of December 4th, 2023 and our last dark moon of the year. And with this energy, we are going to see a real ebb and flow over the next week. And we're prepping for some big energy and some big transformation. So let's kind of start with where we are. We're in Sagittarius season, and that is a gregarious, happy sign. It's a fire sign, it's, um, the, it's getting outward, it's getting with the energy of celebration and community, and sort of a lot of people are already sort of feeling like they're in the energy of 2024. So a lot of people are really doing their reflection and review. And so this dark moon is the perfect time to do that. We are now in Mercury shadow. And what does that mean? It means Mercury is going to go retrograde next week. It's going to take its three week hiatus for the rest of the year and it will be retrograde until December 31st. So it's interesting because that's the end of the month's going to be really, really interesting. So December has quite, quite a, an ebb and flow. So you have, we're going into the month with a dark moon and the dark moon is where the full moon is disseminating into a place where there's less moon visible in the sky. And that means that we're getting ready for a new moon that'll happen early next week. When, when you're looking at that, that means in that dark moon energy, this is that place where it's time to do the letting go. What is it maybe you thought you wanted to do in 2023 that you just didn't accomplish? What is it that you you are trying to finish by the end of 2023? What is it that you're trying to loot, tie up loose ends? And so there's some surrender and letting go. It's a great time for forgiveness work. It's a great time for acceptance work. And it's a great time to surrender because sometimes we just have to admit, I am here now. And there's a really important piece with that sentence. I am here now. It's a very Eckhart Tolle, the power of now sentence. And yet it's it's profound in that we are never anywhere but in the now. Wherever we are, the now is always where we are. There is technically no tomorrow and no yesterday. We are always in the now. So in this present moment, it's important to be really present. This is this is sort of the theme for December. And to be present in your higher heart. This is this is where your thymus is. This is that place where we can love ourselves just a little bit more. We can love others just a little bit more. We can give up that perfectionism, we can let go of, of the shoulda, woulda, couldas. We can just be super grateful. And the, and the couple of frequencies that are really powerful for us to use in, in the right now is the power of gratitude. Being grateful, if you are doing that, that review this month of where you've been, and I always do mine by looking at my camera on my cell phone and looking at all the pictures and going, wow, what, what a year has this has been. You get to be grateful. You get to be seeing how far you've come. Because sometimes we don't realize we've come as far as we really have. And a lot of times we would have we are just exactly where a year ago we had hoped to be or 10 years ago, we had hoped to be. For me, this is an anniversary year of bringing Odyssey Institute 
in about three more weeks, I will have launched my website in 2013. I launched it at the end of the year, 10 years ago. So look how far I've come from launching my very first website to where I am now. And so, so you're looking at how far have I come? What have I accomplished? What can I let go of? And where can I stop judging myself? So this is a review, but it is not meant to beat yourself up. It's actually meant to be in gratitude, the attitude of gratitude. And you cannot be in lack and gratitude at the same time. So let's bring yourself into that place of, of acceptance, into that place of surrender, and into that place of an even more appreciative love. And for all the lessons you've learned and all the growth and all the, the joy you have received, this is, this is that kind of review. And so it's kind of like the tide is going out. It's the dark moon and we are getting ready next week for a pretty, pretty big week. We have the new moon, we have Mercury going retrograde and it will be our last new moon for the year um, with the full moon accumulating right after December 20. It's on tw December 26. So we'll have technically a full moon if you celebrate Christmas. So. For this season, you'll have that that manifesting energy from the 12th and the 13th all the way to the 26th. So it's going to be like the energy of starting something, the energy of of growing something. So there's there's sort of a catch 22, and this is why I say it's an ebb and a flow. We're going to be in Sagittarius until the 21st. So in this case, that's an outward energetic. And so you want to get your parties in. You want to get your, your, your socializing in this weekend and even the weekend of the 18th, if, if at all possible. Because once we move into the Capricorn at the end of the year, it might feel like it's more important to be inward only with your most cherished family and friends, only with... with the people that you really want to spend your private energy with. So if there's people you need to celebrate with early in the month, do that now. Um, as we come into Mercury retrograde, people have asked me, I've gotten several questions this week, is it going to be a conflict to be manifesting during the new moon since it's also Mercury retrograde? And I said, well, this is really interesting. So this particular Mercury retrograde looks like it's going to be hitting more in a communication and technology sector. This is why it might not be the best time to buy a computer until the first of the year when Mercury goes out of retrograde. So if you're gonna buy electronics as a holiday present, you may wanna buy it this week. If you are going to um, want a new computer or a new phone, I'd buy it this week or I'd buy it the week after um, New Year's in, in those two windows. If you are looking though at revisiting things, maybe you're seeing family. A lot of times travel is good during Mercury retrograde, even though people say that Mercury retrograde isn't isn't good for travel. You just have to be careful for delays. Make sure that your paperwork has ha, has been updated. Make sure that your car has been serviced. Be to the airport a little bit early, but it's actually a great time to go home. So if you're visiting family or you're visiting somewhere you've already been, anywhere you've been or people that you've been from your past, Mercury retrograde is a great time for that. So for example, I'm gonna be visiting Ohio during Mercury retrograde, and that feels really good because I'll be revisiting people and my past. So you might see revisitation of old friends. You may feel like you need to um, make up with someone, and you may feel, you might have people reaching out to you to make up 
with you before the end of this year. So if there is some karma that needs to be cleared by putting peace in your heart and putting peace into your communication, this would be the perfect time to do it. So if there is if there is any making up to do, I would do it between this and the end of the year. Um, it's a it's a great time for peacemaking. In fact, I'm hoping that we can put enough prayers for peace into the world that the international peacemakers are are actually listening to us as well and that they find a moment of peace in the world. So, so you're going to see that it is a good time for reflection and review all the way till the end of the year. It's a good time for starting things that have to do with, um, maybe the way I should reword it is restarting things that maybe you've put down. So if there is a project that you have put down, the new moon in Mercury retrograde is a great time to get ready to complete something, to, to re-look at something, re-envision it, re-master it, re-plan it. So that could happen. But if you want to complete something without the Mercury retrograde, I would do it this week. This is a great week for clearing, house clearing, um, doing anything that is completing a cycle, a project, or clearing away, cleansing, and removing pretty much anything. And then in that three-week period of time to the end of the year, you're going to see you're going to have that um, that new moon and Mercury retrograde next week. The week after that, you're going to see the winter solstice. And then after that, you're going to have a full moon for Christmas if that's, um, if that's something you celebrate. But either way, you're going to have a full moon on the 26th. So this is sort of the theme for this month is this ebb and flow of letting things come following the mood. Don't push. Follow the flow of energy. If you feel tired, honor your body. If you feel energized, get it done now because you may not have the energy later. It's very much, please try and honor your moods. Don't take on a conversation that you don't feel up for. Allow yourself to maybe talk talk to them at a later time when your when your energy is more in alignment for that really be honoring yourself honoring your your energy field if you feel tired and withdrawn this week take time to rest i really feel like this week's mood is a reflection and a completion mood so as we as we see this this um, this week, we're prepping for the rest of the month. Anything that you can get done this week that would make the rest of the month really going into 2024 easier, now is a time. But you're gonna see this is the perfect time to be looking at your calendars. It is a perfect time to plan and review and re reflect. Although I will say that if you put a lot of things in motion the week of the 12th, you may see that the things you think you're going to do from the 12th to the 20, 29th or so of December, you might have to revisit that. So if you're looking for travel plans for 2024 or to set big ideas and programs in, I would do it this week and I would do it the first week of January with using those three three weeks from the 12th to the to the end of the month as more of a time to connect with people, connect with your spirit guides. You're going to see an upgrade in intuition this year with this December 20th to 22nd portal. You are in this spiritual year, a seven year. So when you look at 2023, you are completing a soul number of seven. And that means that if there is anything you need to be more connected to your own soul and your own spiritual path, 
this is the time that it's going to come up. And so dream big, allow yourself to be receiving messages from the other side, receiving spiritual guidance. It's just that that place where you make something really, really go, I would start that right after January 1st with the astrology. I would really, we're going to have a go, go, go first part of the year. And then we'll see a, a big pop with the new moon in January of real drive. And it's not there, not there right at the first. It's, it's about a week into January that we get the new moon. So we'll have that first week, a little bit uh, recalibrating till after the 6th of January. So you have that first week to just kind of start implementing and putting things in place after the Mercury is um, gone direct. So it's, it's a big month, December, and I think you're going to find that it is a time to reflect, recalibrate, and follow the ebb and flow of your physical body and your emotions. In the meantime, the upside is it's an incredible time to be alive in the world and in your body. It's actually going to be really happy. It's, it's, been a little sluggish. A lot of people had a rough October or November. And I really believe that you're going to see people coming out, finding their joy, finding their passion again. Um, and maybe that's you. Maybe it's you that needs to get connected to who you are and where you're going. 2024 is an eight year, which is an infinite abundance energy. And it is the year of the dragon. So let's get excited, folks. This is definitely something to be looking forward to. In the meantime, if you are wanting to sign up for the Spiritual Life Coaching Program, it is my honor and my excitement to announce that I finally have the dates for 2024. I, I am taking my own advice and getting it all solid on the books before this retrograde. And so I do have the Spiritual Life Coaching Program um, up and available. And it is running from January through March. So in that time, it's four of the main Theta Healing courses. In case you don't know, we, we go through the basic Theta Healing process. We go through the advanced class and book and manual. Then we move into digging deeper and you and the creator. And these are the four core classes that the Theta Healing Institute, which was created by Bayana Steibel, has, has these four different classes that really encompass everything you would need to start working with as a healer to heal yourself or to heal another person and to even start working with other people as as a full-time living. Now, this year I have something very special. I have added the game of life. Before before this, I was not able to teach game of life online. So, I actually added this extra 3D class. It is really one of my favorite classes. It takes you from being a passenger in your life to a driver in your life and can be turned around and used as coaching material if you do become a life coach. So whether you're looking to heal yourself, so I have clients that are engineers and mortgage brokers and doctors and chiropractors and massage therapists that aren't planning on ever becoming a spiritual life coach per se, but this allows them to heal their own blocks, change their DNA, heal their physical, mental, and spiritual bodies so that they are the most productive they could possibly be. And if that's something you're interested in and you'd like to know more, please get a hold of me. I'm happy to have a discovery call with you and see if Theta Healing and this particular program is the right fit for you for 2024. I am super excited to, to be offering this as a package with these 
beautiful five classes all run on the weekends. Either if they're a three-day class, they start on Friday night and then it's Saturday and Sunday during the day. Or in some cases, they're a two-day class. So it's all online and it's all on the weekends. So I call it the Weekend Warrior Program. If that is something you desire to work on this year and your goal is to become a spiritual entrepreneur and you're not sure how to do it, give me a message and we'll, we'll sit down and have a chat and see if I can help you. All right, let's do a tiny little clearing um, to help you set up for this week. So just allow yourself to straighten your spine and relax your neck and take a deep breath, allowing yourself to exhale all the air out of your lungs. <sighs> and I encourage you to breathe in with full breath and exhale with full breath. And it's best if you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. But if that's too hard because of the time of the year, go ahead and feel free to do it any way that's comfortable for you. And I want you to allow yourself to sink in to your body. Feel yourself surrounded in a beautiful ball of light. And this ball of light is aurora borealis, like a pearl. It's all the colors of the rainbow, but it's intrinsically white. And it's all around you. And inside this beautiful ball of light, it is washing away, cleansing, and removing all the soul fragments, all the energy, anything that is in there that is not yours. So anything that you have attached, sending it into the seventh plane light of love to be transmuted and returning you to your heart and your higher heart so that you can feel centered. And I want you to imagine that you are sending energy down through your tailbone, allowing yourself to connect to the earth, bringing that earth energy up through your feet, through your tailbone, through your spine, opening up your spinal column, opening up your arms and legs and your feet and connecting to your heart and your mind's eye, activating your 12 strand DNA and connecting to your own soul's essence bringing your brain and your heart into mind-heart coherence, creating a field of light and love around you and connecting to alignment, feeling yourself harmonized, aligned, and coherent. And allowing yourself to relax and surrender all the shoulda, woulda, couldas, and be here, present in the moment, present in your heart center. And go ahead and allow yourself to be in the energy of gratitude. This is your best time and you are here now. And just feel like you can make a little manifestation or a big manifestation right now. And let's together send that wish out into the ether. Send that energy to be claimed, creator of all that is. It is commanded that this be claimed in the highest and best way. It is done, it is done, it is done. Show me this or better. All that I have and all that I am becoming. I'm so grateful and thankful. This is already mine. And just let yourself be in the energy of manifestation, pure light, pure love, 
with a peaceful heart and an open mind and the field that magnifies all of your desires to you with grace and ease and love and joy. And I wish you just the most beautiful and blessed week this week. Enjoy yourself and remember to live magically.